I recently had someone request that I build another one of the Neo Geo Mini portables uh, as seen on this channel about uh, 14 months ago. And I was like, yeah, sure, I can do that. But I thought I would do some improvements along the way. So I just wanted to make this short video talking about uh, what I did differently with this one. So a big part of the previous one was the, uh, the joystick, the D-pad. Now famously, as <laughs> Metal Jesus Rocks complained about, the Neo Geo Mini has an analog stick, something like you might see in a modern game controller. And I'm sure they just did that because it's simple. You know, I, I had an improved version in my first one of these, but I wanted to make it even more improved. So I'm starting with a 1 8 inch uh, ball bearing. And what I wanted to do was, you know, basically um, use side actuated tack switches. I had some left over from that uh, recent Atari project. So I designed uh, some stuff around it, like I called this my super stick. And then right at the bottom is the ball bearing. So that's actually what it pivots on. But if you look up here, you'll see these little cups, like these little arms. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm actually going to have springs inset in those. So if this is the PCB, like this, see how there's like a little gap there? So there will actually be uh, small springs between the circuit board and these cups pushing the joystick in all four directions to help keep it centered. So you're not just relying on the throwback action of the switch itself like the previous version of this. So then we have this upper cap. Now what this does is it basically holds the springs in place. So see how it's got the empty spot. So the spring actually presses against the PCB, but this also guides it forward. And if you look at it from the side view, you'll see there is also a gap there, and that's so the main uh, joystick assembly can rotate. And then below that, we have lower cap, which just mates with that. And the lower cap also is the resting point for the ball bearing, which does subtract into it a little bit. And then finally, this is assembled by driving screws through the front of the PCB and then through both layers. So it'll be a little tricky to assemble, especially without having springs go flying everywhere, but I think it'll work out pretty well. Something else I've done is to expose the mini HDMI port right there and have uh, nicer speaker grills. Before I just had uh, holes in the 3D print, but now I'm actually going to inset some plastic. And on the top here, we have a power switch and then the Player 2 USB-C port. Of course, you got a inset SNK on the back. That'll look pretty cool. And here's the other speaker. And then at the bottom, we have the charging port and the headphone jack port. So unlike the first Neo Geo Mini portable that I made, this one is going to have a custom circuit board built for it. I'll just get it through Osh Park. You have your uh, basically analog to digital conversion here for the joystick, because remember, it was a analog potentiometer stick like any normal game console. So what I've done is I've created a voltage divider and added uh, up and down left right switches to basically simulate the analog stick being pushed either all the way in one direction or the other. So it's still being sensed as an analog value by the motherboard. It just doesn't know that it's being triggered digitally. We have our charge port here. And then I broke out the uh, headphone jack into uh, a port so we can rewire that pretty easily. And then there, uh, there was a uh, header, like a 0.075 inch pitch header. I think it was, on the Neo Geo motherboard. So I just uh, got the pin out of that. I created a part in Eagle so I can connect things to it. And then we have select start and then A, B, C, D. So if we go back to the board view, on the bottom side of the unit, we see we have a, a surface mount connector that will go between this PCB and the main motherboard. That'll be nice and neat. Side actuated tack switches. These are actually the same ones that I used for the Atari project, the up and down volume control. Battery charger here on the left. Uh, I'm using the Adafruit Power Boost 1000 schematic for this. It's pretty easy to use. You basically have a uh, battery charger and then a boost. So this will charge your battery properly, the LiPo battery. And then since the LiPo is you know 3.7 to 4.2 volts, this part will actually boost it to 5 volts. You can use it with most devices. And I also created a part for the surface mount inline headphone jack. So I, I'll just desolder this from the Neo Geo motherboard and place it onto my motherboard. So all I have to do is connect four wires between the Neo Geo motherboard to this board, and then we'll have our audio pass through working. Here's five volts going back to the Neo Geo. And finally, the power switch, which simply enables the five volt 
boost circuit. Oh, and of course, uh, green and red charge indicators. USB mini, because it's my favorite. It's the most mechanically sound. Here's the original drawing in Adobe Illustrator. I'm going to keep most of these aspects, although, yes, uh, these um, side-mounted mini snap action switches obviously have been replaced with something a little simpler. And right here I have the representation of the PCB, so I basically keep track of it on this side and in Eagle as well. And then right here I just have, you know, left a space about 0.75 by 0.75 inch square. This will be the joystick frame that I already showed you. Uh, yeah, so it's pretty much the same thing. I just need to make sure that, you know, there's enough tilt for the joystick. So you need to make sure that it actuates the switch before it runs out of room to move. See how you could have uh, an impact there. This is gonna be a little thicker than the other one. I needed some space. Well, one thing, the PCB, see how I made it purple because of Oshpark? It has to actually sit behind the screen. You can see it right there, how it's behind the LCD. The reason for that is because the portion with the interconnect between the boards, well, it goes up that high, it goes behind the screen. So it caused me to have to push some things back. I mean, we could have actually had a lot less space between the front of the unit and the PCB, but it's fine. It's still, uh, it's exactly one inch thick. I tend to try to leave a uh, quarter inch thickness for lipos. It's usually pretty good. Uh, sometimes they'll say they're a quarter inch thick, but they'll actually be a little thicker than that, or they can expand. So yeah, uh, and I'm going to cut this out of black and gold plastic. That's what the person requested. And I have to admit, it does actually look pretty cool. I mean, I made the original one red, so it looked like, you know, a Neo Geo cabinet, at least the early cabinets, but yeah, black and gold does look a lot cooler. All right, well, that's basically, you know, the design changes I made for the new unit. So I'm going to get it assembled and show you what's inside. Here's the assembled new Neo Geo Mini portable. The Neo Geo motherboard is mounted to the back of the unit. Got some uh, captain tape holding down some of the wires. Uh, there's the exposed USB-C port for player two. Then over here on this side, we have the custom PCB that I got from Osh Park. It has the power regulation and boost circuit on it. And then if you look here, you can see the joystick assembly. Yeah, see, so you can see one of the springs there. So uh, yeah, it keeps the joystick fairly well centered. Uh, yeah, not too much connecting the two halves. We have battery power coming in, then we have 5 volts going back to the Neo Geo. This is for the audio pass-through, so it's going to those connections that go to the headphone jack. Basically, audio goes out to the headphone jack, then either goes to the headphone or passes through to the speakers. I just need to plug in this LCD cable, and then we can sandwich it together. Now I need to fold the two halves together. I just want to make sure that all the ribbon cables lay down flat, they don't hit each other. And I also have to make sure that the headers align. That's actually kind of tricky to do, but I'll just have to feel my way through it. Got our LCD ribbon cable here. The player one joystick port is going to remain buried. I mean, come on, you've got these controls right here. Let's take a look at the back of the unit. We have some fairly pointless vent holes here along with an inset SNK logo made out of laser cut brushed gold plastic. On the side we have the micro HDMI port and the right speaker. At the top we have the power switch and the second player USB-C port. On this side we have the left speaker. At the bottom we have the headphone jack and the charge port. And the first time I built one of these the joystick kind of slid around kind of slid left and right, up and down into some switches. And this one, as you can see, actually pivots. So it's a lot. It's a lot closer to a real joystick and more satisfying. Yeah, I'm glad this person asked me to do black and gold. It, it does look a lot cooler than the red and white one I made originally. Let's test it out. Forty-year anniversary of SNK, and oh my gosh, the Neo Geo itself is now thirty years old. Came out in the uh, spring of nineteen ninety. I 
the launch title was, at least in America, was Nam 1975. That's the year I was born. Someone in the comments will probably call me a boomer, which just shows that they don't know what a boomer is. All right, left and right, looks good. Up, shoot down. One thing I really like about uh, Metal Slug is that you only die if something happens to you. So like touching an enemy doesn't kill you, but if an enemy shoots you or gets you with a knife, then that does kill you. I always like that in games, like a motivated death, I guess you could call it. Let's get this guy. Now we should be able to beat this stage without dying and that's a way for me to judge if the controls are working well. Sorry about your village. Oh, a metal slug! Metal slug! We have a title. Oh, yeah, there. <laughs> and this is obviously emulated, but uh, I guess they choose to emulate the slowdown as well. That was the Neo Geo. It was uh, 14 megahertz? It was faster than a Genesis, although it was. Uh, I believe it was a vanilla 68,000. I always love this, this little ship here in the background with the waterfall over it. It just gives it a really good sense of depth and, and epicness. Oh no, this thing looks deadly. So I think the uh, first uh, Metal Slug is still my favorite. It just has the most... I don't know, it just has the most charm and the detail. I know the other ones have detail as well, but there's something about the detail in this one that I like the best. It, it kind of has kind of like a decrepit feel, you know? Whoa, oh, pushed the wrong button. I think I can still do it. Yeah! Yeah, let's find a fighting game so we can test the diagonal movement. Uh, what was that called? Samurai Showdown? Is that what that is? Okay, yeah. Let's see if diagonals work. Diagonal up. Oh no! Peter Pan beat me up! Oh man, get my butt kicked. Yeah, it looks like the uh, diagonals work. That's the main thing I'm worried about. Yeah, this uh, former analog stick that's been made digital uh, works pretty well. The speakers on the side give us really good stereo separation. Um, one thing that people don't realize is that a lot of arcade machines were mono. And uh, actually Neo Geo is one of the first mainstream stereo games. Now they got some nice faux shadows going on. I don't believe the Neo Geo has transparency. No, it doesn't. A power-up item appears. Oh, thanks. It seems like all the directional movements are pretty smooth. Do I have like a super bomb or anything? Apparently not. Oh, I am dead. This game's not too hard so far. I would call it more of a bullet purgatory. Yeah, nice circular movement. That's good. Um, Neo Geo Mini is a pretty decent uh, little system. Yeah, it has some quirks, like it's the AES versions of the game. Uh, I think Blood is disabled, but, you know, emulation's pretty good. Sound is good. I mean, I don't know why they just didn't make a portable. I mean, I know they had the portable Neo Geo a few years back, but... Oh man, I had that thing in my <laughs> Amazon cart so many times, I really, really wanted it, but apparently it wasn't very good. But I mean, I don't see why they couldn't have taken hardware like this and just slapped on a LiPo and you know, sold something like this. 
But again, I guess they already did. Ah, oh, man, they really need NeoTurf Masters. The greatest golf game ever made. All right, well, there you go. It's the uh, slightly revised model of the Ben Heck Neo Geo Mini Portable. It's got uh, more features than before, more ports. It's got a uh, real PCB, which makes it a lot easier to assemble. So yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. And uh, let me know if there's any other uh, modern mini systems that you'd like to see me mod, make portable, just modify in general. See you next time.